Hey guys, what's up? Good evening. Good to see you guys. Um, let's stand together. We got some coming in. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Father, we thank you for this night. Father, we thank you for being able to come together, Father, to worship in your house. I pray that everything that is done in this service, Lord, is, is in your will. Lord, that you, that you mold each part of it, Father, that you uh, speak the hearts, Father, through your people. And I pray tonight as we continue to worship you and as we learn uh, the, uh, the message that Mitch has for us that you've given him this past week in Proverbs, Father, we just pray that you speak to our hearts, you challenge us, and you make us better Christians for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys, I'm going to give you the night off tonight, okay? So you can be seated, okay? Now, listen, just because you're seated doesn't mean that you have to talk all night long, okay? So some of these songs, you, these two songs I want to do, you know, I hope, if you don't listen to 88.3 or one of those stations, you probably will not know it. But if you do, you will know these songs. You can sing with me. Uh, but these songs, Mitch texted me earlier today and asked me if I had any songs to go with this message. And uh, I found these, these songs, and I think they go perfect with his message. Um, so this will kind of back up what he's going to say uh, in songs. So as we sing these tonight, as the Father moves through our hearts and through our, our lives, as we worship him, uh, let's just sing it to him tonight, okay? Be still, there is a healer, his love is deeper than the sea his mercy is unfailing his arms are fortress for the weak let faith arise let faith arise i lift my hands to believe my refuge you are my strength as I pour out my heart these things I remember you are faithful God forever be still there is a river that flows from Calvary's tree, a fountain for the thirsty, pure grace that washes over me, and let faith arise, let faith arise. I lift my hands to believe again. You are my refuge, you are my strength. As I pour out my heart, these things I remember. You are faithful, God, forever. I lift my hands to believe again. You are my refuge. I pour out my heart these things I remember you are faithful God my hands to believe again. You 
You know, guys, God's telling me. But anyways, we're, we're, we're going to go this way. Um, I don't know why I'm saying this, but, I, you know, I just feel like the Lord is telling me to do this. It's not in the plans. But, guys, I know that some of you here are struggling right now. And what I mean by that is, you know, in our lives, we try to play the perfect part. We try to be the perfect person. We try to be uh, everything to everyone. Tonight, I feel like sometimes, is, and, and I'm speaking for myself too, is that we forget who we are trying to please, and that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Guys, we can play church all we want. We can come in here and look the part. We can come see our friends, but guys, where the rubber meets the road is if we're investing in other people. Guys, you have great influence over students in your school, you do not realize the things that you can do that I can't do and Mitch can't do. But guys, you can do that. I want to see us as a church and as a, as a student ministry reach out to people and not just stay within these four walls. I want us to speak to hearts through what we've lived through and what Jesus has done for us. And I say that to not say this. Guys, I love you. As we come together, as we worship Him in spirit and truth, tonight if you're struggling, we know the overcomer. We know who has overcome for us, and that's Jesus Christ tonight. He is our Father and our Savior. As we worship and continue to worship Him in this next song, I pray tonight that if, you, if, you're, if your heart is lifted, if God is speaking to you tonight, this altar is open as I sing this song. If, if God's leading it, listen, here's the other part of it. If you just come up here just to come up here, stay where you're at. Because I really want God moving in your lives. If God is not telling you to come to this altar for any reason, do not come just because you're friends. Now, if your friends go and you want to support them, you go do that. Perfectly awesome. That's what we're here for. So as I sing this song and you feel the Lord leading, if there's a part in your life that you want to overcome, but you're trying to do it yourself, He can overcome that for you. If there's people in your lives that you want to reach for Christ, your mom and dad, your sisters, your brothers, uh, fellow students, and you want to pray for them tonight, this altar is open. And uh, I, just, I don't know why the Lord's telling me to do that, but we're going to do that, and uh, I'm going to follow His lead. So as I sing this song, um, this altar is open. Destined to die, poured out for all mankind. And God's only Son, the perfect and spotless one, He never sinned, but suffered as if He did. You are. 
God, so he overcame for us. Amen? Mitch. Started. <clears throat> Last week, I asked each of you to spend some time for the next 30 days. Some of you that are not here, let me get you caught up where we're at and what we're doing and... and uh, there you go. Last week we we done a message and and talking about it was last week was it last week or week before? Last week, okay. Thanks. That's cool. <laughs> but I ask you, or I shared with you that in through scripture we have to learn to trust God. And and as teenagers, I want you to still understand this is totally where God's still taking me. I, I honest to goodness, today I feel like that that's the core of the message that I'm going to share with you right now, and, and I want to be totally honest with you. I've had a message written for two days, and I came home, or I came to work this morning, and I sat down in my office, and that all changed. I had to start writing today, and and I got finished about 1.30 this afternoon, and I said, okay, God, I pray that whomever is there that needs to hear this, I pray that that it's uh, not just a coincidence that they came, come to church, but I pray that you begin to share with them in their heart that they need to hear this word. And, and like Josh, uh, we just want to be obedient. We just want to follow God's lead. And, and here's the thing. We do it for you guys so that you can grow and mature in your spiritual walk with Christ. So I ask you, I told you last week that in our spiritual walk that we have to learn to trust God. When we begin to trust God, we will begin to step out in more faith than what we ever have known, and we will see some different things happening. I'm telling you, I even shared that I wouldn't lie to you. I've never lied to you, and I wouldn't begin today. But I want you to understand the more the core of your relationships is trust in Jesus Christ. Now, how do you get to trust boyfriend, girlfriend? You know that. You've got to get to know them. You've got to spend time together, and you've got to know. And I know you say, good grief, Mitch, you're being... A whole lot of repetitions taking place. I'm telling you, we got to get this. 
because that's the way Jesus taught to the people. He taught in parables, which was stories that what? Related with the occupation that the people had. Or he shared about carpentry or fishing or a tax collector. Something to do with what the people did for a living. So I want you to know as teenagers, it's not common, okay, listen to me. It's not very common for teenagers to step up and be very mature and grow in their walk with Christ and be the best Christ followers available by the time you're a freshman or sophomore. Sadly to say, and I'm not giving you rights to go out the door today and say, woohoo, I can live in sin because, man, we're not going to be there and it's still going to be a few years. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is get the head start. Now, jump into motion Embrace the gift that God give, which is salvation. If you're here tonight and you know Christ personally, and everybody needs to be listening, please. Embrace the gift that he's given us through his son dying on a cross that you can have eternity. And take that and begin now. I promise if you will begin to trust. And, and by the way, those of you that are not here, let me go ahead and challenge you for the next 30 days. So that's going to put you about a week past the ones I challenged last week. Read the book of John. The book of John is, is full of love, and it's full of Jesus sharing and God sharing his love for the people. And I've been through three or four chapters. I just take my time and, and go through it. And I'm not journaling, but I ask you to journal. I'm highlighting or underlining in, in my Bible. Man, it's crazy in the first three or four chapters what I've already got. Is anybody doing that? Raise your hands if you are. One, two. Thank you. Three, four. Wow. Wow. That's cool. So 50 not doing it, 4 doing it. I hope you're being blessed because I really am. And that's the choice that we have to make is to allow God to bless us through learning how to trust him on a deeper level. As you begin in the book of John and when you're underlining or journaling the things that he does that gives us reason to trust Caitlin. As we see that in the book, as we highlight or journal or underline or whatever, as we begin to see that God gave his only son that's enough reason for me and you to be able to trust right that's what we have to learn to do is see the little bitty things throughout scripture and if you'll notice reading scripture and getting used to looking for those things you're going to find out that there's more there than you ever thought or that you may have ever scratched the surface off so as as this morning and i'm going to be honest with you as I, this morning when i went into the office and i thought the message i had wrote for for tonight was really good. <laughs> I, I liked it. It came together, and, and it was one of those that come together real easy, and I said, man, this is it. Well, last night I started thinking, is it it? I got to work this morning. I said, okay, Lord, what do you want? I didn't have a clue. All of a sudden, the book of Proverbs comes through. Uh, it comes to my heart, and, and I'm thinking, okay, I ask our students to read whatever day of the week. Today's the 19th. We're supposed to read the 19th chapter. Yesterday was the 18th. You're supposed to read the 18th chapter. So I'm thumbing through the last few days, just say, okay, God, where do you want me? What do you want me to do? And I thumb through, and I come to the chapter 18, and I begin to read for some odd reason, and I get to verse 10 and 11. So before I put that on the wall, before Bobby puts that up on the projector, I want to get you where, I want to give you some background of why I ask you to do Proverbs, okay? For those of you that, that are just, here tonight, the first time you've been here in a while or visiting with us or whatever, I want to encourage you to read the book of Proverbs on every, there's 31 books, chapters, and there's either 30, 31 days in a month usually, except for 28 or 29 a couple times or whatever, but read whatever day of the week, the, whatever day of the week it is, read that chapter in Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is written so that you and I can learn to understand. Okay, as Christ followers, the book of Proverbs is full of wisdom so that you, teenagers, it's for all ages, so that you and I can take this book and read and see the testimonies. Solomon wrote most of the book of Proverbs, okay? Solomon wrote most of the book of Proverbs. He shares a lot of wisdom. Does anybody know what Solomon had opportunity to pray for, and he prayed and got. Yep. Right? Okay. So, him being the writer, 
in the book of Proverbs, God wants us to understand and be fair in the world we live in to those that we need to lead to Christ. Also, there's a purpose that you and I can learn the very wisdom of God through this book. So I'm going to take two verses tonight, and I'm going to show you purpose in it. I want to do, I don't have points. I don't have three points and, and Josh sing a song. We're not going to do it like that. I'm going to do some old-time expository preaching. I, I just want to share with you these two verses. I want to break these things down and share with you what they're saying and what they mean. I want to give you some of the wisdom that's behind the Scripture in verses 10 and 11 here tonight. And I hope that you can take this with you and apply it to your lives and learn and, and maybe understand a little bit more. Now, Bobby, as you put up Proverbs 18, 10, and 11, I want us to understand that God here through the book, through Solomon writing, is wanting to give us not only wisdom, but he wants us to have the direction that we need in our spiritual walk. Okay? Listen. God wants us to understand that there's nothing in the world that can harm us. If we draw close enough to him, if we are in his will, if we are getting to know him on a day-to-day -day basis in our relationship, like I told you a little while ago, if it is the core of our spiritual walk, learning him and growing in him and maturing in him, applying his word to our life, then there is nothing in this world that can ever harm us. Okay? We have to understand that. I want you to know there's not a test that's big enough out there that can, that can ruin your day. There's not a person in your school that can persecute you, that can ruin your faith or your, uh, your walk with Christ. We choose from a shallow relationship. Listen to me, guys. We choose from a shallow relationship to pick and say, I'm done. I'm not going to live for God anymore. That's got to go. Just like Josh talking about while he's singing. If, if you're going to come up here and kneel at this altar, if you're coming just to, just to impress Dakota, then you're coming for the wrong reason. All right? And I don't want to be ugly or disrespectful about it, but, man, I'm telling you, we're talking about a dude here that died on a cross that you and I could have eternal life, and that's got to soak in at some time. You've got to understand that this is Jesus Christ we're talking about. I'm telling you, that ought to excite us. That, that ought to make us want to live for Christ, to know how much our Father loves us. Listen, if you will begin to underline, journal, and write things in John throughout the book, if you will begin to underline reasons why that you can trust Him, I'm telling you, your spiritual walk's going to say, wow. And I'd really like a few more than four to do this. So I'm going to ask one more time, if you raise your hand, and I'm going to be honest, can I challenge you just to spend the next 30 days and really learn and really allow God to speak to you and let him tell you how to trust him? Will you do that? Raise your hand if you will. Come on, don't look at your buddies. This is between you and God. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That's cool. You can put your hands down. Listen, I promise you, you'll grow. I promise you that you'll see things happen. All right, let's break this scripture down. Number one, uh, verse 10, I mean. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. Verse 11 says, The rich man's wealth is his strong city, and like a high wall in his own esteem. So I want to take these verses, these two verses, put the first one back up there, Bobby, and I want to just break them down. First off, I want to talk about the, mm, the name of the Lord. I want to talk about that first and foremost. And, and one of the many names that come to mind is Jehovah when we talk about the name of the Lord. Now, there's all kinds of names. If you ever Google the names of God or the names of our Lord, there's a whole lot of them. I've been in churches, I've seen in churches, where there's one church in Nashville, and it's a bigger church than this. And, and they decided to take the names of God and plaster them around the walls at the top like a border. And it's pretty cool because it stretches all the way around the, the walls. And, and, man, there's so many names that God has. But the one that comes to mind when I'm thinking about this, the Lord, the Lord is our strong tower, 
the name of the Lord I want to talk about that comes to mind is Jehovah. When I say Jehovah, I mean the very existing one. Okay? Now, we're not talking about Buddha, Muhammad, or any of these other guys that are dead, fat, or whatever, or made of gold. But we're talking about our Lord and Savior. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's called Trinity. Okay? So don't even try to think about Trinity right now. That is a whole different sermon, and that is a whole different confusing ordeal because some things we know that they're all one even though they're separate right if i could talk about trinity for just a second and that's all i want but i want to i want you to understand that man we got to understand he is god and we're not so the the only existing one comes to my mind and that's the definition or or the term used in jehovah okay so we have to understand but i want to take you if i can go just a tad deeper I want to take you farther than just the names of God because here's the deal. Here's the deal. You may be sitting here right now, and this is the illustration that comes to mind right now. You may be sitting here and looking next three, four, five rows up or around or whatever, and you may be able to name every student in here. You may know their names. But here's what I want you to do. In one accord with Christ's people, when we come together in this student ministry, our name is what? United. When we come together in unity... I want you to know more. I want you to know more. Listen to me. I want you to know more, Matt, than just the names of people around you. I want you all to begin to understand the character. You got me? Let me just tell you this. When you get to know some of you guys in here and begin to see the character of God that you display, when you begin, when, when some of you guys begin to look at some of the students that's in here, and, and I, I'm going to use, I'm, let me brag on Chelsea for just a minute. Let me just brag on Chelsea. We've knew each other for how long? About a year. But you know what? The last about four or five months, I've really become close in seeing her character. You understand me? You, you see what I'm saying here, where I'm going with this? Because you know what? I, I see the very peace that comes across Chelsea as she walks. I see the very comfort in God, the contentment in her voice when she talks to me about Jesus living in her heart. That's character. That's character of salvation. That's character of God that she displays within her very heart. And there's others of you that I could say the same thing or more about. There, there's the same, there, it's going on in a lot of you students that's here. I can tell you, I could go on and talk, but what I want you to do is I want you to know more than the names of God. When this comes to mind, the name of our Lord, when, it, when, it, when you see this, the name of the Lord, here's what I want you to come, I want you to come in mind with this. This is what goes across your heart when you think about our Lord and Savior. You think about his character. Through his character, number one, he brings what? Thank you. He brings salvation. That's his character. What? What's his character? That he loved you and me enough that he died, right? Do you think for a second, guys, listen to me. You've heard Pastor Derek. Do you think for one second that there wasn't 10,000 angels lined up in heaven and Jesus could have said, you know what? They're not worthy. And he didn't. You believe that? I believe it. But you know something else? I believe that the character of God allows me to know in my heart right now that there were 10,000 angels lined up in heaven and they knew that Jesus Christ was the true one. I'm dying for you because I love you. And I love them that much that I'd give my life that they could have a relationship with me and I'm in heaven. That's the character to know first and foremost that he died for you. Understand that more in more depth than just what you've been taught all your life. Because listen to me, the death of Jesus Christ has been watered down. Amen? Anywhere in Scripture you read, <clears throat> listen, it's not like the movies. I've shared this with you before, and I'll share it with you again. The Passion, who's seen it? 
You remember when he was whipped with the cat of nine tails, the leather and the rock and the glass? Not You remember when they tied him around the post and he was there bareback and, and they whipped him and it showed the stripes actually going. You remember that, Kenna? Pretty gross, wasn't it? Does anybody else remember seeing as he walked the Via Della Rosa, the scratches, it was all on his face and just eat up practically, eat up while he walked. But he still walked the walk, right? You remember that? I've shared with you before, the character of God, if you'll look in depth, if you grow and mature in your relationship with him, you'll understand that the book of Isaiah will explain to you that Jesus Christ looked like hamburger meat. It says in Scripture, people pass by walking by the cross on a daily basis, and they barely knew him as man. Do you understand? The character of God says that he gave it all. He was beaten and he was whipped and he was spit upon and he was cursed. All so that you could have eternity and a relationship with him. Are you beginning to see the character instead of just the names? Listen to me. He's spit everywhere. <laughs> Makes sense. Attractive as well. Let me just share you that with this. I just lost about 40 people right there by a blob of spit flying out of my mouth. I'm glad YouTube didn't see that even though we're on, our cameras aren't that good. <laughs> Where was I? Are you beginning to see the character of God? Through two things there we've talked about, through him dying a death and through him giving his life, that we could have eternity. Man, are you understanding? Listen, I don't mean this disrespectful, but I don't care if they call him Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh or any of those, those names mean something and, and there's a whole bunch of them that pattern around the wall, but you know what? I want them patterned, I want them patterned right here. I want the character of God to be in everyone's heart right here and I want to see you in your schools laced like a, like a border in around the people that don't know Christ. Are you getting this? Do you understand what I want to see? What God wants to see in us knowing the character? Let me move on real quick. The name of the Lord talks about his character, not only salvation, but it also, the character of Jesus Christ. When you see the name, you've got to relate it to in your relationship with comfort. You've got to relate it with peace. You've got to relate it with joy. You've got to relate it with answers. You've got to relate it even as with questions because God will give you the answers as well as you have questions. You've got to understand that he is all, the character of him is about protection over you. All these things we see through that character. So moving forward, man, when you see the name of the Lord, understand that it's his character that we are reverent to. It's his character that it's embedded in our hearts, and that's what makes us live, and that's how we grow to live for the purpose that he's called us. Moving on. <coughs> The reason that I asked you to do the quiet time, and man, it's crazy because that wasn't in my notes last week. You remember, is off the cuff, and I'm kind of probably sure this is where the message is coming from this week. But if you've got a Head Start Pew 4 that started last week in underlining or journaling or whatever, you can begin right there in, in going back and recapping and looking, and you can look at all those things and say, man, that's the character of God. That's his character. That's the character that's showing me right now that I can live my life. So moving forward, if you go to the next part of that very verse, man, I like this verse. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I want to go underline it. If you've got your Bibles, is a strong tower. Number one, you underline or highlight the name of the Lord. Second is a strong tower. I want us to look at that. The name of the Lord is strong tower. Here, you've heard the song, He is my strong tower, right? Who sings that? Who? Cutlass. Cool. Tonight you heard Josh sing some Chris Tomlin tunes, which talks about refuge. It talks about his power. It talks about his body. It talks about that he is that strong tower. And when I, when I, when I mentioned the word strong tower, when I seen it in Scripture today, immediately I thought about, man, all this stuff that we've been looking at, all these things that we've been learning about how to trust God and looking at our relationship, in our relationship, not only knowing the character of God is important, but we have to understand that he is our strong tower. Now, you're saying, Mitch, what's a strong tower? I mean, really. 
let me explain it to you. Let's go back about a thousand days so everybody can put their robes on. You can put your Jerusalem stompers, your whatever you want to call them, sandals, whatever you got. Put it on and let's go because I want to take you back in this passage of Scripture and take you back about 1,000 years, okay? I want you to get in, ingrained in your head right now. We're going back a thousand years, so that means what? There's no McDonald's, there's no Porsches, there's no food cities, there's not even a dairy heart. Wow, I don't know how they made it. There's not anything going on back in a thousand days, so what people did here, I want to explain to you what Strong Tower is real quick, okay? Back a thousand years ago, in this time of Scripture, <coughs> or longer, the people lived in little villages, okay? If you can imagine, they're walking through the town, going to fetch water. You read all the stories about the guy sitting at the gates and the guy going to fetch water, the woman going to fetch water, and how she served people. You've heard all the stories, so kind of relate some of these things. And you can just imagine the robes they had on and, and the hose in their hand that they made. They didn't go to Ace Hardware, guys, and, and buy one of the hose to go back and work the garden. Everything they had, they learned to make. Or, or survive through their own skills and through their own wisdom and their knowledge. I wanted to go a step further and let you know that they had godly wisdom. And that's where we learn from this passage of Scripture. A strong tower, here's what it is. You go back a thousand years ago and you have these people that live in their little community. All right? Imagine these guys every day working for a change. Be a lot different than our world, right? They actually had to work. Listen, they sowed the garden. They sowed their crop, whether it, whether it was corn. They depended on whatever crop that they could sell. I'm sure that there was times of the year or things in season more so than what other. Corn may have been a big deal, so some of them may have fixed way more corn so that they could sell some of it or whatever. So here we see that these people in the communities, they had their old dirty robes on. They were dressed just dirty and nasty remember there wasn't showers get your play, get in that place and understand that man it was all rough and tough okay especially the way we have it today but you say that that the strong tower were these people's source of security and when i tell you it was a source of security is those people knew not only in their minds but they knew in their hearts and i'm going to share with you in a minute on their reactions how their reactions were that I'm going to let you know that it was embedded in their hearts, not only their brains. But okay, we're back and they worked the fields, sowing the crops and gathering their harvest, plowing all the things they need to do, and it comes harvest time. When they harvest the crops, listen, there's one or two ways this thing can go. It can be a good harvest or it can be bad. If it's bad, listen to me. I want to tell Paul Morrison, who rides his van? Anybody in here? Paul and John, anybody ride their van? Okay. Paul has a garden every year, and you can go over on Silver Lake Road, and man, it's beautiful. There's not weeds in it. The crops usually grow real high and good, and my family has eaten a lot of stuff out of that garden. But just like this year, when he planted tomatoes, he didn't get about a basket or two baskets full. He said, Mitch, man, the tomatoes couldn't learn to swim quick enough, and they drowned, and they ruined. Well, do you understand that back in the day, you know what? He could just go to Food City and buy Granger tomatoes. And that'll practically be almost as good during this time of season. We can go to Food City and buy corn all day long, right? We can go buy cucumbers. We can go buy all these things that grow in a garden. We can go to Food City if the harvest is not ripe, if it doesn't work out, if there's a weather change or something happens. We can go to Food City and don't have to depend solely on a garden. These people, it was their livelihood, okay? So here's the thing. It was their livelihood. They're working, sowing, plowing, and harvest. All of a sudden, boom, they hear a loud trumpet sound from a, a ridge across the way where they're at. They're, they've got everything figured out because they've got a station over here where there's going to be a guy that, that stands on duty, and there's rotations probably, I can imagine, and, and they're up on this hill. When they get word or when they see intruders that come in, such as robbers, crop robbers, because there's people that come in to try to steal things to go and sell that they can have the living or that they can make it through the season and don't care about anybody else. Still the same as it is today there. 
because we know of all the things that go on in our world. And here's what we've got to learn to do. We've got to learn, like these people, we've got to learn to go to our, our strong tower instead of retaliation. We've got to learn to go to our strong tower instead of trying to do it ourselves to fight back and retaliate and do it our way. That all comes into us doing it God's way. These people, when the trumpet sounded, the, the, the people hurriedly told people from here to here that, listen, there's a robber in the place. So run for your lives. You know where to go. They had places that were already dug out. Listen, they had holes that were already dug. They had places where they placed valuables, where they put crops and all this. So immediately when they hear the trumpet, they get word. What do they have to do? They have to hurry because their life depends on it, right? It's all about the strong tower. Listen to me now. You're going to get the moral of all this story. So the people, when they're out in the field or even having a festival, a celebration of all the crops in, during a party or during a time of fellowship or whatever, and they get word that there's a robber coming, boom. They run to their place. They hide the goods. They hide their valuables. They don't care about them anymore. They cover it up, and they run for the strong tower. It's usually set up on another ridge. They run up on this hill, and here we see four big columns made of stone, and we see walls that are so high that people can't climb across. We see a big wooden drawbridge, maybe, as the last person's going across that drawbridge coming up. We see two big double doors as maybe thousands of people run in out of this community. In this strong tower, the doors will go boom and shut. And immediately, when they get inside, they have guards that are placed and looking. They have walls that can't be tore down. They have a refuge. And they've ran from ridge to ridge from place to place, and they get in this place, and immediately, if you can imagine back in that day, running from things that's going on like that, running from all the, the people that's trying to rob, kill, or whatever, when they get in and the doors go shut, can you see the sigh of relief? Can you see some of those people back in this day begin to go, thank you. Do you see it happening? Let me share with you. In closing, this strong tower, what scripture in Proverbs 18, 10, and 11 is sharing with us, this strong tower where the people could go and find refuge, where they could go and find safety, where they could go and find peace and comfort and joy and all these things, even in the time of trial, even in the time of suffering, even in the time of pain, inside of this strong tower there was refuge. In closing, Jesus Christ is your strong tower. We don't read about any of these guys when they drop the hoe, when they gather their goods. We don't. It doesn't say. It says. What's the scripture? Pull it up, Robbie. <coughs> it's there. Drink. Okay, I can read it here. It says right here, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, listen to me, if you're taking notes, the righteous run to it. It doesn't say that the righteous, it doesn't say that people dropped everything that they were doing and picked up all their harvest and all this and sit, met with their families and said, okay, how do we need to react to this? Do we need to go to this strong tower or do we need to go inside of our hut and defend ourselves because we got all these goods, we got all these worldly things, we got all these valuables that we have to protect. Do we stay here? Do we get cousin Jeb and Eb and Zeb and all them guys and get them to help us fight? They can get their bows or whatever, and we can shoot darts or whatever we do at them, and, and we can defend ourselves for a while. If we get in trouble, then we'll try to hurry and get to the strong tower. Did they ever stop and say, you know what, God, I, I got this. I, I'm not worried about the enemy. I'm not worried about any of this. I, I got this. I can take care of me and my family. And boom, they stay out of the strong tower. It says right here that the righteous people, the righteous man run to this place. So here's what I want you to understand. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care where you're at tonight. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, listen to me, guys. This is very important. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need a strong tower. You 
need a place of refuge. You need a place where you can find peace. You need a place where you can find comfort. You need a place where you can get love like you can't get any. Let me just tell you this. Your mother and dad, as much as they love you, and some of you may say, mine don't. They whip me all the time. That's because they love you. Trust me. But they can't touch the love that God has for you. God loves you so much. Listen to me. God loved you so much that he gave you the son of God. Now, listen, when you understand in here and in here what this strong tower is, when you honestly know through your relationship with Jesus Christ and through learning to trust him, when you learn that he is your strong tower, there's nothing in Churchill. There's nothing in Hawkins County, guys. There's nothing in the Tri-Cities. There's nothing in the states. There's nothing in this world that can touch you. I promise. Or, like verse 11, I pray you don't make the choice. The rich man's wealth, look at it. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. Listen, what it's saying don't let the worldly pleasures. Don't let what you've lived for maybe this long continue to be over here. Make him your strong tower. Would you stand with me?